Hi, Hannah. Hi, Charlie. So what are we up to today? We're going to be building our own compass using some household objects. Cool. So where do we get started in talking about what we need for a compass? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about how magnetic energy makes compasses on Earth here work. So our Earth is basically like one giant magnet because of the molten core of iron and nickel in the middle. So way in the center of the Earth and it has a magnetic field that we can't see. Much like if you look at a magnet, you can't see the invisible area around it where other magnets are attracted to it. It's the same thing on our Earth. Uh, and other magnets or things that are magnetic on our Earth will be attracted to and pointed towards the two poles here on Earth. So that, how does that impact me in terms of navigating? Yeah, so if we find something that we can charge with magnetic energy, it will point to one of these two poles, allowing us to know which direction is north. Cool, that sounds pretty helpful. Yeah, it will be really helpful. The one thing we have to pay attention to though, is magnetic north is a little bit different than true north. True north is the point that the Earth spins on, but that where that magnetic field comes out of our Earth is a little bit off on the side. So we have to make sure we're taking into account those differences called declination when we're traveling over long distances. Great. But since we're gonna be in a pretty small area here, we're probably not gonna to need to pay too close attention. Okay. Let's get started making our compass. First, we're gonna to have to gather our materials. All right. So first we need a little bowl. This will be the base of our compass. And we're gonna fill that with water. Uh, we also need a sewing needle. Got one in there. I sure do. And then we're going to need, yeah, a big one. Uh, then we're going to need a magnet. A good strong fridge magnet is what I chose to use today. One of the really thin magnets probably won't work as well. So this is the magnet we're going to be using. Uh, and then we're going to need a pair of scissors and a piece of paper, um, which will be our first step. Charlie, do you want to cut a small circle about an inch or two in diameter out of that paper? So do I want it to fit in the bottom of this bowl right here? Uh, it's going to float in some water in the bowl. So oh, okay. it's going to be pretty small, can be a good size. All right. Yeah, so Go. Charlie, if... great. You can cut a pretty small circle, Charlie, because our needle is going to go right through it. Nice. Actually, even smaller than that. Yeah, that looks perfect. Nice. So this will be the base that our compass is going to be spinning on and help our needle float. Um, for our next step, we're just going to put a north at one side of our, our compass dial so we know which way our compass is facing. Great. Our next step is we're going to fill our bowl up halfway with water. I've got my water bottle here to do that. So here comes the key part. We're gonna charge our needle with magnetic energy. Uh, so I'll show you how to do it on one side and then you can do the other. So our magnet has two sides. We wanna first charge the point of our needle on the back of our magnet so that this end will, will face north. So we're gonna use the back side of the magnet to charge our needle we're going to take the point end of the needle and rub that half across the magnet in the same direction about 30 times. Great. Now Charlie, if you want to do the other half, you're going to rub the end with the eye on the back side of the magnet or the side that would face away from the fridge in the same direction about 30 times. So this is charging our needle with magnetic energy. So Charlie, what I'm gonna have you do with that needle is thread it through the little circle we made so that the needle goes uh, down through the paper and then back up. And then the point of the needle is pointing out the top where we wrote north. And I'm thinking that this is probably something you're gonna to wanna to do fairly carefully at home so you don't stick yourself in exactly. the paper. So maybe ask your parent for help. Needles can be pretty sharp. <laughs> So now, Charlie, we're going to test our magnet. This is the last step. Really carefully, we're going to place that piece of paper and the needle to float on the top of the water. 
And now we're gonna see if it will spin. Oh, here it goes. Oh my gosh. Ah. And we wanna let it stabilize. So it might take a little while for the needle to find its resting point. That looks like it, Charlie. Nice work. Wow, that's pretty cool. Cool. So now that we've made our compass, our next step to do is to test it to see if it worked. So we have some compasses here we can use, but if you don't have a compass at home, most smartphones have a compass app on them that you can use. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line our compass up um, and I'm gonna take into account the declination, that difference between magnetic and true north here um, afterwards. We're gonna just line it up like this right now, put the needle in Red the, shed. In the shed. Yeah, the red needle in the shed. And let's match that up. Look at the difference. They're pretty darn close. So we can think about some of the factors maybe that would make our compass a little bit more accurate. If we rub it really carefully in the same direction, that will help it be more accurate. Um, maybe the water, you can see our compass is slowly starting to sink because that paper can't keep it afloat for too long. Um, so some of those may affect the inaccuracies, but I would say that's a pretty close match. I mean, especially considering that we started the needle pointing in the exact opposite direction. I know, it's, I loved when it spun around. Uh, so now, Charlie, do you want to see if we can use our compass to do a little bit of navigating? Yeah, there's some cool things that I can find around, around here. Once you finish making your compass at home, see if you can use it to create a small scavenger hunt or a route around your house for you or one of your family members to try to follow. So I made one here for you today, Charlie, uh, and it has four simple steps. Um, and we're going to use the directions here from this compass uh, and start over on the farmhouse porch. Want right. to give it a go? I'm ready. So you have to orient yourself to which way north is. Oh, okay. Uh, and then think about how we're gonna follow our scavenger hunt. All right. Your compass probably won't work if you walk with it because the water will bounce around and make the needle work. So you may have to just keep track of which way north is before you begin. Okay. So now that we're here at the start, I've created some directions using the cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west, that we learned where they are from our compass create some paths for you to find some things I've hidden. Four, five, so south, east, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I found something. It's a little pup. <laughs> Does, is there a theme to this scavenger hunt? There might be. <laughs> yes. Okay, what do I do next? This puppy needs a friend. Great. Charlie, your next direction, you're going to go five paces to the west, 23 paces south, and then four more paces to the west. Oh my gosh, I'm probably going to need some reminders of that because that those are a lot of directions. That's all right. But it's worth it because this puppy needs a friend. Let's head out. Five, five paces west. Oh, five paces west. Okay, so I'm going back the way that I came. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five. South. How many to the south? 23. 23. Woo! Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty-two, twenty-three. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23. Alright, what was the last one again? Four paces to the west. Four paces to the west. I'm peaking and I think my paces might be a little bit too big <laughs> for this next one. Alright. One, two, three, four. <gasps> Another friend! Oh, two now. All right, where's, where's my last friend? To find our last friend, you're gonna go 10 paces north and 20 paces west. 10 paces north, 20 paces west. Okay, I think I got it. I'm going back towards where I started from first and then I'm going to go that way. All right, here we go. How many, 10 north? 10 north. And then 20 west. 20 west. Got it, all right, here we go pups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. <laughs> Three's a crowd. Here we go. We got three. All right. Now what, Hannah? So, Charlie, the last thing you have to do is return to home. 
we're gonna mix it up a little bit here. Instead of just using north, south, east, and west, we're gonna give a direction that's in between. To finish up, you're gonna go 25 paces northeast. Cool, all right, I love the combo ones. All right, so we're headed, that's north, that's east, so we're gonna go in this direction. Yeah, I right think in I know, between. I think I know where we're ending up. Right. Here we go, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, That was a lot of fun, Hannah. Thank you so much for that. Thanks for building a compass with me and for following my crazy directions around <laughs> the area here. If you're looking for a bonus activity to work on your map and compass skills a little bit more, you can create a map of the area that you make your route in and mark out the paces. Make sure you include something like a scale so people know the distance and that compass rose that you'll have figured out from the compass that you made. Thank you so much for, for helping us out this week, Hannah. And we're both really looking forward to seeing what you all get up to at home, whether it's documentation of your own scavenger hunt through pictures or comic strips or writing, or whether it's the map that you make from, from the route that you, that you traveled. But either way, we're looking forward to seeing what you come up with, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.